have a quorum now and so um, Leon Waldvogel yes here Jamie Bowman here Frank Myers here Donna Rausch Martha Patterson here. we do have a quorum So the first item on your agenda would be to approve the okay. agenda yes. for today, but we'll need to do an amendment if someone yeah. would want to make a motion. I wish to make an amendment to the agenda for tonight. I make a motion to amend the agenda and have the uh, regular meeting before the work session. I second. Votes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do we need to approve the agenda and stuff first? Um, yeah, let's go. Okay. I make a motion to approve the agenda for this evening's meeting. Second. Aye. All those in favor. You have to say yes, all, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. And aye. He said aye. Yes. Okay, motion carried. Okay, the next item on your agenda is the approval of the previous meeting's minutes. Uh, before you, you have two sets of of minutes, one for the meeting, the regular meeting we had on June 19th, and one for the special meeting we had on June 27th. And the one on June the 19th, at the bottom of page two, mm -hmm. uh, where it says installing the pool, it should be without approval of permits instead of with approval. Am I correct? Well, in uh, the sentence states, Ms. Bosler wanted to apologize for installing the pool without approval. Oh, you are correct. So I'll make that correction. Mm. We'll do one minute, one set of minutes at each. Yeah, and then on the next page it says, and needed approval for the pool. It's just a little nitpicky stuff. Is this in the first paragraph? Yes, first sentence. Okay, I'll make that correction as well. I make a motion to approve the minutes from June 19th. I'll second it. As amended. As amended, sorry. Yes, for a vote. In favor? Aye. 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 And the June 27, 2017 special meeting minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes from June 27th as written. I wasn't here. Can I make a motion? No. Mm -hmm. you, Frank. Frank, do you want I'm to trying to hear what's going on. <laughs> she made a motion to approve the. Did we have a second? No, that's She what can't we... second it because she wasn't here, so you're. Okay, that's I'll true. second it. That's true. Uh, and Graham? You have to ask for a vote. 
Mm -hmm. Ask everyone. For all for all in those favor. in favor. Yes, all in favor. Aye. 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 Some places I have been asked for agreement and then again, so. introduction of evidence. So I would like to introduce into evidence the St. Genevieve Municipal Code and the design guidelines for the National Register of Historic District and the staff report that you have in front of you with documentation. I'll make a motion to accept the as submitted. I second that motion. <coughs> We'll ask for a vote. Aye. 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 No old business at this point. You can only make business. Mm -hmm. Under new business. Yes, under new business. Item number SGHC 047-17, um, Tim Meyer would like to receive a certificate of appropriateness to remove the carport, remove window awnings, remove the cedar tree, replace the front porch post columns with HBG permacast columns and relocate or rework the electric meter near the, the electric meter entrance on the house at 365 South Gabbery. Now, when you look at your staff report in front of you it has only it's only listed those items there are other items that he has requested some of those items are maintenance items some of those items are able to be approved administratively and so the uh, full list of everything that he's requesting to do is he's doing work on the inside of the home um, replacing any missing siding asbestos siding that's on the house which it wouldn't be replaced obviously with that but it would be a you know something that looked like it. Repaint the exterior of the structure. Um, and then before you tonight, um, removing the carport, the window awnings, replacing the front porch post. Um, also part of the maintenance and the is repairing the eaves and the gable overhangs that need to be repaired with in-kind materials. Um, before you would be the removal of the cedar tree and relocation and rework of the electric meter. Um, he's also requesting to replace the uh, roof with an in-kind asphalt shingle roof. So again, the items that you have in front of you this evening are the items that would require Heritage Commission right. approval. Everything else falls under maintenance or administrative approval. And Tim Meyer is here. If you'd like to approach the. Good evening. Hi. Okay, so, uh, me and my brother uh, with Meyer Honings own the 365 Amory House. And just like Carlos said, we're doing, we're doing a lot of uh, <coughs> maintenance to the house, uh, removing the, the awnings, the carport, cedar tree. Uh, I'd like to replace the front porch columns also as as she stated and you know basically then the painting that's just a, a maintenance a maintenance issue and painting the outside of the house windows trim eaves you know I, I think it's I think all the eaves and uh, soffits and everything are pretty solid but you know till you till you get up there and start you know painting it and checking it out but I you know so one to <clears throat> kind of replace the house and get it get it spruced up and cleaned up and uh, the back roof was replaced uh, a few years ago. Uh, the front roof, I haven't been up there lately, but if it's bad, we'd like to just replace with the same. Three tab asphalt shingle that was on the house when, when we acquired the house years ago. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> inside, we're basically totally totally redoing the inside of the house. We're gonna rewire the whole, whole house, replumb it. You know, re-drywall, re-floor, it's just just totally redoing the inside, new kitchen, new bathrooms. 
So. This is the second time now we've heard the project, and this one looks a lot better than what we saw. Yeah, I think I figured you'd like this a lot better than the first one. So, uh, just a couple of questions: Was the porch floor will that remain as is? It's it's uh, concrete. Floor. It's concrete. We we would just paint okay. it. We have no plans of, of ripping that out. I'm, I'm sure it was a, a wooden structure back in the day, but and you're removing the carport, and that will just remain a slab or what would be um, I would say just that'd be a, a driveway. Whether we take out the asphalt, I, I don't know. We haven't uh, really talked about that. Yes, okay. So it, right right now, it's an asphalt pad underneath the carport. So uh, that's something we might have to come back and. Maybe we, we put a new driveway in there. I, I don't know. We'll have to see how. I think it's kind of cracked and crumbled up maybe a little bit. But, uh, so, um, so do you guys? Oh, on the uh, the front the front door too. The front door was kicked in. Uh, haven't I sit here thinking about? It. I think it's busted up uh, by the where the where the handle set is and dead. I think that's all busted up. So we'd like to maybe go back with the same style door. I think there's pictures of a door that I yeah. picked out. Well, it actually looks just like the door that's in there now. Our, I was heading for, to the county fair over the weekend. There's a nice house being really redone down in Gabbery that has a craftsman style door, and I thought that looked nice there too. So we're, we're not too picky. We'd like to go back either with what's, what's there or maybe a craftsman style that I thought that looked nice and attractive. But we, we'd uh, repaint the windows, re redo the windows. Uh, we'd like to put new storm windows on it too um, to protect the, the wood windows that are there. But there's some sills that are routed out and so I'll be replacing that with cedar or you know something rot proof there. It'd be a wood. Removing the electric meter entrance to the other yeah, I think side of the house. That's just, it's just, an, it's just an eyesore, there's just wires all over that front porch on the left side. And a lot of that has to do with uh, direct TV and other boxes and charter or whatever was on the house. So we would remove all that, but I'd like to uh, actually call Ronnie getting there and he's going to go check it out. But I think we can come in from the, the top and just put a, a, a you know, a, you know, uh, one that's typically used. I mean, you kind of come through the roof with the mast and the, and the bulkhead and come down and just clean that all up. And, and the, cause I, the uh, uh, electrical sir, the electrical boxes on the outside, the breaker boxes on the outside of that house. Mm. So that's not a good idea, I wouldn't think. So it'd be on the inside. We'd be putting that on the inside. So we're reworking all the wiring. Mm -hmm. I think it sounds good. Um, what about the columns? Okay, so do you guys want to break these out into individual items, or do you think that everything is is okay now? Tim, just to just right. to let just to let you know, if you're replacing the door with what's there now, which has the diamond-shaped window in it, that is that is something that I can approve. If you're wanting to change the style of the front door, then we would need to have the commission to to look at that. But we would need to have. Um, you know, a, a design of, of the you know the door that you're looking to. I mean, I mean, we can just go with what's on there right now. The style that I submitted, that's that's fine too. Okay, that's, then that's, that's something that can be. What approved. has been presented here? I don't see any problems basically that we have, except one, and that not address. And I think you need to get on the city and see what they can do about improving the front of that street right in front of that. I mean it. Look at the photograph of it. I mean, it's just a crummy street boat, and then you step onto the port. Yeah, that's it's probably been like that. Be for some way they could do something to get a little bit of a separation there. It looks like a residential property. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it should be too expensive, but. It's you go the city who does it. Okay. But I think it should be done. I'll see if they can come up with some ideas on that there. And uh, yeah, there's barely enough room to, there's probably just six, seven feet, I guess, from the, from the actual shoulder or. Yeah. That's. 
Um, I did have one other question about the replacement porch posts. Mm -hmm. Are you tied into the colonial style? I'm not really. T I just picked out like a turn column. The house across the street, I forgot his name, uh, but he's got some turn porch columns. You see them all over the place. That yeah. was nice to me. Well, the chamfered posts, uh, I don't know if there's a dis difference in price, but so far as the style of the building, if you're, you said you were thinking about using a craftsman style, yeah. the you got door, it. but you, if you were thinking about going the craftsman style and to the age oh. of the actual house, the chamfered might be Are a little more... Are you talking craftsman, craftsman style where it's tapered? Well, they're on the page that you've picked, the perma posts, mm -hmm. the chamfered look more like the, uh, actually like the light posts that yep. we have downtown. I, I can check on, check on that and uh, I know I can get these, uh, those permit caps ones for about 95 or or $100. I didn't price out that other one. I just didn't even really look over there. I just seen that. And like on turn, turn uh, columns, uh, I call it, you know, and, and, and everybody here might have a source for them. I, I made a few phone calls. A lot of people don't even carry those no more. A wooden turn column because those permacast ones by HP and G have gotten so popular and they're, they're rot proof and they're just, you know, all the benefits on and on and on and they, they look authentic. So, but I can check on that other, other style and or somebody knows somebody's making some wooden ones, you know. That I can check on the other one. From the submittal that we see here, regardless of what style you select, it'll be an improvement on what's there now. Big improvement. Yeah, on what, mm -hmm. what style's on there now, just some rod iron, yeah. you know. So, yeah, so the front door, on, the back door seems to be in decent shape on the house, so I would just uh, keep that, but replacing. The asbestos shingles that are missing was, I'm going was to make similar. A motion that we accept as presented, because I think it's a big improvement. Um, and maybe put something in there about the front door and the storm windows. Yeah, because yeah, 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 we hadn't talked about storm windows um, in our email. Um, so if you're wanting to replace the storm windows with same styles, uh, I probably want the white storm window. Same style, but just white to go with the white windows. I'll be painting the windows white, so I thought that would look nicer than mill finished. Okay, so um, just to make sure that we have everything here, so you are you're going to go ahead with the um, same style of front door that's in there now. So we won't need to add that into this which I would be able to approve administratively. So just do um, that. And, our, and like, like I said, we're open, like, I forgot your name. Leanne. Yeah. What is it? Leanne. Leanne. So I mean, if somebody has another style that might fit it, we're, we're open to that. Just like the porch column, you suggested that. I'm not checking to that if you have something else that might be. Well, the style that's in there now, if I recall right, is kind of a little. It's a diamond. It's not a diamond, yeah, yeah. That has nothing. That has nothing. That is no semblance of historic. That's not that a you see. So, like again, I think if he brings in a submittal to you that looks like more of a colonial door, either just a solid or something better than the, than the diamond. triangle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we sh should have ruled it. So then, um, so then, Tim, what we'll do is when you figure out a design of the front door for sure that you want to go with, then send me over some specs on that, and we'll t we'll take a look at that compared to you know some of the doors that were historically. Um, so then, this um, this request in front of you this evening will be to remove the carport, remove the window awnings remove the cedar tree, replace the front porch post columns with an HBG permacast column um, of either, do you have any any complaints one way or another, whether it's the, or the uh, 
me. I want to make sure that I get this right. The colonial style, or would you prefer, as Leanne had stated, to see more of a chamfered style of post? Could Is he there? Just die? Could he just That's die up to you guys. And then um, relocating or reworking the electric meter entrance to a more appropriate location out of plain sight from the front of the house and then adding the white storm windows onto the outside. <clears throat> Carla, one, one more thing, one obvious thing that I, I forgot, just thought of that now too, there is a vinyl window on the top second floor. I, okay, yes. I'd get rid of that and put in a historically accurate window to match all the other ones. On that's on the front. Which, uh, if, you're, if you're going back with something that would be more historically appropriate, then that's, and it's a wood window that's in there, then that's something that I can approve administratively. Okay. What style would this house be more considered as? Because it's been added on to, like, what, three or three times? Yeah, it's probably. Thinking, yeah, probably at least three. It's, I mean, I... This is I one think of those... I think it might I think that has just fallen through the cracks somewhere. Yeah, because honestly, I think that it has, it started as kind of a, a side gabled wood frame house, but with the additions and everything. Because I think initially, when we looked at the Sanborn mass initially, I believe it, it might have even been just a, a small, yeah, I mean, no, not even an eye. I, it just a small little dwelling was all that was there and then it was added on to and then the second story it was probably just this little piece here. yeah it was just a very small yeah. house the, the, the front room's got has the uh, brick and mortar up about four or five feet inside the wall inside mm -hmm. the wall that front wall on left and right of that front door mm -hmm. and then it goes back because the house, side to, to the house the in the um in the register actually dates it at 1920 but in some of the research that was discovered when um, the Sanborn in the Sanborn map, whenever yeah, there was Ed and Scott there. were here, um, they were doing the research. They found they they found a structure on a Sanborn map that was dated from 1894, and there so there was a dwelling there. So I mean, it's possible that this the original structure of the house could be from 1890s. You know, so, but it's been added on and. Mm -hmm. And covered and right. I would support. just say, and, uh, as long as the door and the columns go together, like the same time period, I said, whatever you choose, you know, just make sure that the kind of, yeah. we don't have a 50s door, right. you know, 1950s door. And then another thing I can do with that, with that window, also I could probably just get some sash made, that's, yeah, Dick, grab mm -hmm. the guys just make on. Well, it's not the bottom of frame still there. Structure like that. Frequently, different parts of the building will have something different because it's been done over time. Right. And the real distraction is if you end up with two or three different styles on one side of the house. If you avoid that. Yeah, uh, because I think this structure has. I think it has three over one. It has. Each, each window, window is a six each. over one, <laughs> you know, so there's, there's some Pretty much each window is its own little world. Was two I'll, over twos. Yeah. So, um, so we'll just look at some different, we'll get together and we'll look at some different options as far as some, you know, maybe some of the other houses in the area and kind of see if we can figure well, out what it is. I'm just saying just match what's, there's a, there's a. 10 or 12 double huns in that house, probably. I'll just say. That are wooden. Yeah, they're wooden. wooden double. Then, I, I then they're already in the house? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then so I, I would just say we, we would mimic yeah. that. Okay. That's. Now, I mean, that would look like the other dozen, then I would think. Right, right. Now, there, there is, I don't know what the committee feels about, there is a window on a second floor facing, ease facing the river. That's not original either. It's a aluminum clad window. Uh, you know, we were thinking, oh, I, don't know, I don't know if, 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 if we could just remove it and cover it up with the, the, the same type of asbestos siding that we're going to be getting to, to patch to repair in a few places around the house and just board that up. And it's Well, that's the window I was going to ask about because it looks different. 
Yeah, it's it. totally, it's totally the, different. The, yeah, the window done. frame and everything Whenever on the outside is completely done. different. Yeah, so, so, so what's that all, room used for? What's that? What, what is the room used for? It's a bedroom. Well, you okay. had that window. Well, there's there's another one. The the vinyl ones in the front. That'd be your escape. Your the ingress. middle one in the front mm -hmm. at the top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. above front, the porch there. Front, front second floor is you're, the vinyl one. You're talking about this one that's over the carport. There. Yeah, yeah, that one there. That one. I like would I would say we could, you know, either I can I can have Dick and the guys build. You know, we, we might be we might be trying to make that look the same too. And, uh, can you still get that side? I can get something that looks that looks, looks like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's up. Have you seen the houses on Fourth Street? <laughs> That's amazing what that he has done and he's got. I haven't been by it lately, but they. Yeah. Did, he, did he get some asbestos looking side? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's that real wide. Yeah, yeah, I, lap, I think it has the ripple of the dog yes. straight on the other side. The, yeah. They, yeah, the wave, it looks wavy something. I don't know. I I say put it back and have nothing there, but it, I know that that's a lot of work too. I mean, yeah. it wouldn't be too much because we're kind of closing the window. Yeah. There. So put it back or just close in the window. Close in and, the window and cover it with um, you know, with the same yeah, style. Yeah, the same type of siding. As long as there's at least a window in the bedroom. Yeah, that, the window in the front right. is, yeah, is for that. There's actually that well. bigger one and then a, a smaller one facing us, facing the west, that's in that same room. Okay, this is long. Are you ready? Okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm going to try to go in order. Okay. I make a motion to remove the carport, remove the window awnings, Remove the cedar tree, replace the posts and front door in matching kind, um, relocate the electric meter, put on white storm windows, put a new window in the front dormer on the second floor, a wood window to try to match the rest as closely as possible and close in the second floor window <coughs> on the east. And I will second it. And the siding is maintenance which is beyond our purview, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, fine. Okay. So we have a motion and we have a second. We have a second. We do a motion. Second. All right. Any other discussion in here? I'll make a second on Mark, I already did. Oh, okay. I thought that didn't ask for here. a vote. <laughs> we need to ask for a vote. Aye. 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 Hi. Okay. So. Okay, thank you. You're good. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Get to work. Get to work. <laughs> no, that's going to be a big improvement. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. It's been sitting for we glad to see it. Don't nice. make it look better than City Hall. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll look nice. That's what our game plan we got all. I think it's going to be a nice little place when we get back. Well, yeah. It's, yeah. it's one of our greeters into town, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It yeah, it's, it's, it's one of your things. It's just sitting there for a good spot right mm -hmm. there. Be the first thing you see when you come over the bridge. It is. It is. So, okay. Thank you. So we'll be together in the next couple of days. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Yep. I just want to say something. Carla, I tip my hat to you. I don't have a hat on. I'll tip my hat to you for all the how you work with these people and especially how you work with the Smith. I just think that's great. Thank you. She, well, was, and she wasn't here to, she sure does. to have the experience of what went before. <laughs> we have a, a great person in that position. And whatever you pay her is not enough. <laughs> Martin, whatever you pay her is not enough. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's kind of true. We don't pay her. It's kind of true of uh, most Can we have a vote on that, please? Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. And we have administrative with Google. 
Okay, so um, there were two administrative approvals, um, not counting, you know, because I hadn't finished everything on, on Tim's package. Um, SGHC 045-17, um, Gary Shell had requested, he's got a pergola in the rear of the, the property at 383 Jefferson Street, and he wasn't changing the outcome. He was had to do some maintenance on that, and so he was lowering it two feet from 10 foot 8 to 8 foot 8 because it, they were having a, a problem with the sun still coming in because it was so tall. And um, and then over at 279 Academy Street, SGHC 046-17, um, he wished to install a black aluminum railing for the sidewalk steps. He had insurance requirements that he, he needed to install a, a railing there. and so. The railing that he had chosen was an aluminum railing, and it'll only be for three steps. And um, and that house is a non-contributing house in the uh, in the district. And so those were the only two administrative approvals. And uh, do we have any questions on those? And are there any questions on those or other business public comments? Okay. Um, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn then. Well, I was wondering if. I make a motion to adjourn. Yes. If we need to adjourn the regular meeting and then yes. begin the. Okay, we have a second. Okay. And that's fine. That's all we need. Okay. Yes. Okay, so the regular meeting has now been adjourned and we'll go into our work session now. And so in light of, you know, some of the um, information that was, has been missing in other meetings and, and things provided, um, we're putting this work session together so we can come up with more of a, um, a guideline or, a, or a, a checklist, so to speak, of, of things that you guys want to make sure that I obtain from a citizen if they're if they are bringing in a project. Obviously, some items that come before you will be um, simpler projects that you know they won't need to have the you know the big elaborate details. But then again, we are going to have projects like the one we had last month that is going to be more detailed and we're going to need more information on. So that's why we're having this work session so that we can talk about the things that you guys want to make sure that, um, that are provided in order for, and if I don't get that information, then I can come, I can come send it back to them at basically asking for more details. And so this is where you guys can just start. We can brainstorm and talk and figure out what, you know. Addressing your first question, maybe you should identify some categories for which certificates are issued and then have a standard, talk about standards for the categories okay. that will work. Yeah. So for like additions, are you talking like that for, um, or? Well, like you said, there's some pretty simple things that you still have to get a, a certificate of appropriateness for, but it doesn't require an architect's drawing in order to, to review it. Right, okay. So, so what would those be? So the, uh, the items, you know, that that wouldn't require, you know, a, an elaborate drawing or, you know, major details would be well, it, replacement items. It depends on the location of the facility, the age of the facility, its association with the other. And basically, if it's a complex structure or new construction, now new construction, we're, all, we're concerned with the appearance of it mm -hmm. because it's supposed to match the historic district. And that, one of the, in the guidelines we have here, that it I is supposed like to, I mean, there seems to be an impression, okay, it's new, anything goes. That's not the way it's supposed to work mm -hmm. in the book. So I, I think that any time it's totally new construction, we ought to have a, a shot at a good scale drawing. We don't need details, certainly don't need interior, any interior. Details. Architect's rendering of the outside. Yeah, yeah ex external blueprint, but, something like but that. But the thing we had with the, uh, with the mill. Sure. If we could ask for a few extra drawings would have 
speed that up immensely. So do you want to require architectural drawings? Or do well, you... It depends. Not sealed. No, 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 no. I don't no. mean sealed. I mean, but do you... But, I mean, you, you can still... I mean, for the building department, we... Well, our guidelines say you don't need architectural drawings unless it's a complex structure. And a good rendering, a pencil rendering, will do it if it's to scale. Okay. It's just something somebody sets down on the back sure. of an envelope and goes out with no scale or no detail. Oh, okay. uh, we need more than that. Okay. Well, and also on the location, what do we need if something is in the yard and what if it's attached to one of the historic residences? We need to know how much information we need for each. If it's going to be actually yeah. affecting this is for you. the house or the historical structure, we so would need more give me an information. Give me an example of what... Uh, well, uh, like we've approved several yard barns. Mm -hmm. If they're wooden or, you know, not visible from I did some reading. the street, then we would not need, I think, as much information as a structure that's going to be attached to one of the historical buildings. Sure. Well, and that would be two different things anyways, because that would really classify it more as an addition, mm -hmm. where um, where something else would be, you know, maybe an outbuilding or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, either architectural drawings or detailed line drawings to scale. Mm -hmm. Carla, I did some research. I went into chapter three mm -hmm. on maintenance and rehab and updating. So what I did is I took some of the suggestions, like porches is not in here, but I did commercial buildings. And then I took out of the guideline a statement briefly describing what we would want on commercial building. And then I asked for plans. I did the same on exteriors. So here, I'm going to give you these. Yeah, yeah. here is a. Okay, I think what she has written out. Do you have extra copies or you can, I can share? I can give them. you my copy. Okay. Here, you can have my copy. I'm ready for everything. Do you want yours back, Councilor Ben? If he gave me his. Yeah. Well, here's a set here, too. That's an extra set. One question before we get too deeply into it. We have guidelines and we have this uh, that's been, re well, the ordinance mm -hmm. that activates this, puts it into effect, has been changed. The guidelines, I don't think we made any changes in the guidelines. Correct. That's correct. Are, are there any changes that the new, I know there's some few minor ones, but are there any significant things that we should be aware of, the list of the changes that came about by creating a new ordinance? Yeah, I don't think the, dis the, design the ordinance guidelines. didn't change any of the design, no. design guidelines. It's not to say you shouldn't consider that, but it wasn't done at that time. Right. Well, on the introduction page of the guidelines, it has to be something. So these were guidelines that were developed under the old ordinance, or the old ordinance was developed at the same time, and then the ordinance changed, and I'm just wondering, is I that I think it's incompatible. I don't think we got You don't think there's any effect on that? No, you're, those are still the standards by which by what decision you're judging made. projects that come in. The, the, the ordinance. You're not Standard to guidelines, design guidelines that we're supposed to be going by. And they, they're, they're all the simple question is, they all, are they all the same? I mean, are, are we dealing with a book that's accurate? Yes. Okay. I got a question. It was brought up in the board meeting. Some Somebody talked about, there was a lot brought up, but somebody talked something about fences, you know, and gates. What was that all about? See, that now that's was... We were talking about fences in general, yeah. not okay. as it pertains to historic right. structures. And the fact that, correct me if I'm wrong, we don't have, we don't regulate fences. I mean, in other words, unless you issue permits, people can put a fence no. up. 
Per, it, with the new building yeah. code yeah. that came out in 2012, any fence that's six foot or under doesn't require a permit. And, and unless I that's changed, that's the building code, Frank. We're not talking historical. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah, but the, the historical says you do. Right. But we're, we're talking about something We're else. talking building code, though. That, that was my question. Yeah. Is, is this an accurate no, statement of all it still the requires, policies we have? It still place. requires a certificate of appropriateness because of the historic district. And in, during the certificate of appropriateness process is when the style of the fence is, is, is gone through and approved at that point or, or not approved. Um, for areas outside of the historic district are the areas where Randy's talking about that was brought up in the board meeting about the building code doesn't we have no and so that's so in that. and right and so that's what that's what it was brought up yeah. uh, mayor brought up the fact that you know there was a, a discussion on fence fences brought up at the last board meeting we had so it, it didn't have anything to do with the historic district no right. those are still regulated by right. the historic by the design guidelines okay uh, but on the other i think we ought to look into yes doing something about that because it Certainly yes. leaves the door wide open. Wide open. Some pretty hideous stuff. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's look at what Martha has. Yeah, any Martha. Additions. Martha's she, got. Um, I think she's paraphrased what's in the design guidelines. I did. And that's it. Try that copy. So, um, which one do we want to start with here? Additions. Additions? Okay. We just talked about it. Okay. So, um, so Martha has drawn up a, um, a, a simple, a brief statement for several different topics. And um, so I'll just read through these. And then, you know, if you guys want to talk about them, and then we can tweak them or, or, or do whatever. So um, under the heading of additions, additions should be compatible with the primary building. Place an addition at the rear of a building or set it back from the front to minimize the visual impact. The roof form should be in character with the primary building. Um, submit plans for replacement, I'm sorry, submit plans for placement, size, kind of materials to be used. And so for additions, if, um, is it okay if I write on these? Sure. Okay. How does that instruct the question? That well, if, we, if we're looking at, at these items, if we're looking at additions, it would be a, a topic to, to start the things that you guys would want to see on those. Um, architectural or detailed line drawings to scale. Yeah, addition should be a, a detailed drawing. specification of the materials to be used. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and well, we the statement of our function is pretty strong, probably stronger uh, than we. No exterior portion of any building or other structure shall be erected, altered, restored, demolished, or moved within the historic district until after an application for a certificate of appropriateness has been submitted to and approved by the Landmarks Commission. Now, there's a, we made a change in the the ordinance in that uh, the uh, Paula has more authority than she had as we operated it before. I'm not opposed to that. I just want to be sure that we're all working with the same. Well, the ordinance is the ruling document. The guidelines are... The guidelines. guidelines. Yeah, the guidelines, but the ordinance says we'll follow the guidelines. Well, so well. On the introduction. I think the ordinance trumps the guidelines. On the introduction page here, it's it should, mainly it should, reads yeah. the guidelines but are not, not I mean, I think a rigid page, set of rules. The they do not require that buildings be restored to a historical period or style. That's on the introduction. Yeah. Anything that, which page is that? 
on the introduction of your guidelines. I know I saw that and saw it and see, didn't that, see a problem with it. Oh. But all I'm saying is that we need to know definitely, all of us need to know definitely what authority we have and what we don't. I think Paul is doing an excellent job on this thing, better than any I've seen in the last 20 years. She's got it better organized, giving us more information. But I still feel uneasy sometimes between the reaction of the Board of Aldermen and the guidelines. Well, philosophically, kind of amazing. The board. Does the board have authority to ignore them? Yes. It's in the book. It's in this, your guideline book. Now, heretofore, they have chosen not to. Mm -hmm. they, I know they have they, the authority they, to change them, but they, I didn't think they had the authority to ignore the law. Well, then there's no, there's no, no, well, are the guidelines, do they rise to the level of a code? And that's, I think, the issue you're raising here. Mm -hmm. Or are they, it's a set of considerations that guide your deliberation in considering the application yes, that's available for you? Well, all I'm saying is I think it might be well for you to review it. Well, that's, I, that's, I know, that's a worthy suggestion. I know when you reviewed it the last time, more slipped over there. And I don't object to that. It's just that I want the the part of the section that we're working with to agree with the part of the section that you're working with. In, 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 in our land use regulations, uh, it says here are certain things that you must do in certain zone districts and here's the way a building must conform in terms of size and percentage of the building on the lot and whatever. And then you have the right to appeal. But your right to appeal is meaningless unless the appellant body can change it can make a decision to allow somebody to do something that appears to be contrary to the letter of the rule because a set of circumstances or whatever consideration com comes to bear. So that right to appeal, I think, answers your question as to what the Board of Aldermen can do. They can do what they want to do. I mean, it's, uh, our ordinance is a creature of our, their legislative authority and any subordinate documents come from that legislative authority. If you are not consistent with your own ordinances, you, over time, have the effect of neutralizing them. They're nullified. So you can't consistently just say, well, I know we adopted that rule, but we're not going to make anybody do it ever again. Then, then the rule cannot be applied, and if somebody wants to sue you in court, they'll lose. You'll lose. I am not in an argument. Your PhD in management sometimes disagrees with my master's in management. <laughs> Okay. Back to the purpose of the meeting. Uh, I was wondering, do we want commercial information about the materials used? I mean, I, I think so. I, I think any information that's... I that's, think that's specification of specification materials. of materials, yeah. Mm -hmm. It is, because that's what... If that's the material that they're getting, that's going to give you every... Technical, the strength, the material you use. That's going to give you all the details you can about the about yeah. the specific there material. There was some lady that came to us a long time ago that said she couldn't find any. Well, yes. And they're right here. At, at a price she was willing to pay. Uh, yeah, these, they usually, <laughs> on most of the gotcha. commercial we found them. materials <laughs> we've had, they've had specific dimensions mm -hmm. and specific materials. I know that Frank has had a number of discussions about ten roofs and how they have not actually been showing up that they are for residential buildings. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure where we are with that yet. Well, and that's and that's you know another discussion we're going to have to have, and that's going to play into the design guidelines right. itself of what what is appropriate and what's not appropriate. And so that's, you know, when we get down to the details of what okay. is so and what to have. So the uh, 
well, the commercial specs would be useful. And that should be included within the yeah. uh, within material. The material list and the drawings. Right. Mm -hmm. I think what I want to express about the drawings is, for example, last week they had drawings, but they weren't to scale. And because the scale was off so much, um, it was difficult to understand what the project was. Yeah, and not all the dimensions were there sure. and things like that. And then it also helped a lot whenever there was a supply list. It was just on like a half sheet of paper or five by seven, whatever. And that clarified a lot of things. And then whenever you compared it to the old drawing, it then made it more sense. It made more sense. Right. Okay. Um, so so now so far I've got and I and I correct me if I'm wrong, this would be something that would be for new construction or addition that you guys would want to want information on. Architectural or detailed line drawings to scale, specification on material to be used in a materials list. It would be on any building in a historic district. That is correct. On any, any um, addition or new building that would be in the historic district. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And add this phrase of sufficient detail for the board to determine it complies with the ordinance and the design guidelines. Mm -hmm. Sufficient detail and clarity. Not just a okay. picture and an arrow. Now I realize that's a bit vague. Mm -hmm. Kind of leaves it up to you. But right. it gives you the opportunity to say I need more. This is not sufficient detail. Right. Of sufficient detail and clarity for the board to determine conformance with the ordinance and the design guidelines. All right. And do we need any kind of time frame? Because I know some things, since I've been here, have been approved and they were done like the next week. The Other things. A certificate of appropriateness is valid for two years. And um, so, what do you about do about the the people that? Um, Ask forgiveness and rather than permission. Yes. Well, I mean, at this time, because a lot of times we've stopped work. Well, we've stopped work before, and and that's been the two situations that I've encountered is is we've I've stopped the work and you've got to come before the commission. And because uh, I mean, it, it negates everything we do. Yeah. And I, I mean. The, you know, you could make them come into compliance. You can order whatever they've done removed. To be removed. Oh, really? Do I believe that even happened once. It did happen know. once. Yeah. It's a, uh, and if your order is challenged, you know, you got to go to court to get it resolved. Uh, historically, courts have supported the administrative decisions of local government up until about 10 years ago, and something happened. Somebody threw a switch. And today, we don't get appealed as often as we used to. So it's more likely, if it's a window situation, that that would be determined in your favor. If somebody ended up putting in a foundation and got a structure built, it's unlikely that a judge is going to make them tear it down. Mm -hmm. But then he might make them make revisions to it to make it more compatible with mm -hmm. the regulations. But uh, that's it. You tell them to stop. It's totally offensive. You order removed. Yeah, I had that question a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago, and you gave me the material about that. Thank okay. you very much. Well, I want a question though: Is do we do a good enough job educating the people to what they can do and what they can't do? Well, and that's something that I have. Well, we've got a a guideline to the historic preservation ordinance that I've started sending that out to 
well, I'm going through the previous months of people that have moved in based on water and sewer accounts that have been set up. And I'm sending those out to all of those individuals, um, whether it be, and then notifying them if they are a, a landmark or if they are a contributing building in the historic district. So, so that way they know if they have questions, then they need to contact. That was a quick, I, I run into a case, I was just drove up to a, a house and they were putting this shed up and I says, did you, did you talk to somebody about this? Right. And he was just ignorant. And, right. And you just. Exactly. And I and he said, well, no. I said, well, you need to go talk. And that's where it come mm -hmm. back. So it was. Well, great. I know when I bought down here in the historic district, I knew I was in the historic district, but I did not want that entailed. Right. I had no idea. Well, that's, I went through that, and that was long before you were mm -hmm. here. Right. When I bought that house, I was told that as long as we had a permit, we could do whatever we wanted. And then different personnel came in, and then all of a sudden we were in the historic district. Well, who told you that? But that I was here when you bought that house. Uh, 2006. All, in fact, the city administrator lived in it before. Right. But I'm just telling and you, I stood here in the lobby, they, and the people that were working here pointed at the map, and they said, oh, you're north of the creek, you're fine, you, you do whatever you want as long as you have a permit. And for the first couple of years it was that way. And it was a change in personnel and then it changed. And I know I'm not the only person that happened to, which is part of just... Well, anybody just, that does I, anything wrong always says, I didn't know about it. Well, And this town has rules just, that are just, absolutely... I, I know if I, I just let that before. Frank, just let me finish my story, okay? okay? <laughs> I'm just telling you, I lived through it, and I know other people lived through it. I think it's the exception. I think for the most part it wasn't that way, but in that particular instance, that's what happened, and I think that was part of the displeasure that some people had about it is it's like, well, all of a sudden this changed, and nobody told me. Now, how it changed and why it changed, I don't know, or was I told incorrectly? I don't know. At this point... It, well, it's moved at this point. But you know, well, it is. You did not know. Well, and you have a, and you have a basic process, problem in that you will to... not be a historic community <laughs> unless you follow certain guidelines. Mm -hmm. The guidelines are written up. Historic covering. No material should be applied as a covering of historic materials. No, or nobody's basis. nobody's Synthetic disputing that. No, but it's done. And consider removing materials that cover the original bill. All, all I'm saying is that it dovetails into what the mayor was saying is that some people didn't know or don't know. That's also, I also, also, realtors should be educated when they sell a house in this town. And they are being educated. And, and I think it's better. But I think at the time, at the time, they at the time a lot of them, they don't. They either didn't know or they don't disclose it. And maybe the people buying the house don't know and then they get a surprise. Right. Yeah. So I remember we, you know, hearing both, that both of those here are in violation of the state regulations for real. Right, right. But I, yeah. Yeah. we have asked we have asked for action on that front and then we've ever seen it in right. the last twenty years I've been on what? Educating them? Yeah, educate oh, other we've people. Sent, we've sent yeah. information to them. Right. So Well, and I have realtors call me on a regular basis asking me what information I can tell them about the properties. Right. Um, I just, I've spoken with, I know I get a call from Cheryl Arthur all the time, and I, I spoke with another realtor a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. about another property that she has someone looking at, and then after I spoke with her, I got a call from the proposed buyer asking. You know, besides active realtors in St. Genevieve, no. They know. The one right. that, you know, I hired my brother in law who has an office in Cleveland to represent my property. Mm -hmm. That guy's not going to know unless right. he right. does his own work. Right. right. And he should, but it doesn't He's mean he will. But the realtors in town know. Right. You know, then, I mean. And then it's kind of contrary to their training because they're, tra they're trained. To, 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 to Don't minimize the number of objections that, that they can't have. Absolutely. Right. right. Make the sale. So have we covered new construction and additions? I think so. I mean, the drawings are going to have, between the drawings, as long as they are either architectural or they're to scale, um, 
and this, the um, specification material, materials list. There's other than well, what, you can, what you can get on a project on those. You know that. Okay, no, so what about commercial building? Necessary. <laughs> Moving along, Jamie. Moving on. Yeah. Well, the windows and doors, those are already yeah. addressed. Mm -hmm. Partial building. Fences. I'm um, going out you, know, you know, another thing that I'd like to add to that, too, is photographs. Um, I have, I get some photographs, but, um, and, you know, applicants also provide photographs, too, but I, I think that's something that, because it, the photograph, along with the drawing, tells yeah. it. You have done a much better so. job on that than any of the previous people in that position in getting photographs and, and drawings, but there's still occasionally is isn't enough, what just isn't enough there. Right. We, we love you, Carl. Or it should be both. <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. But yeah, at least a, a good photograph of what needs repair, right, can give us some idea of how urgent yeah. it is, if nothing else. Well, like this tonight, that was documented very well. Yeah. Everybody could see what we were talking sure. about, and everything mm -hmm. was documented. Some, not so much. Right. When we had problems with the other way. Right. I don't see how the commercial applications differ a whole lot from a you know, residential no. remodel or addition or a so uh, new construction. Mm -hmm. buildings. Um, new construction and additions. And then, um, like, well, the, we, we, do, we have run into the commercial properties a couple of times with the new museum and then with the Smith mm -hmm. um, building, the mill, um, because we wanted to make sure like that the tin on the Smith's building, I mean, that is what they chose, but it all matched and it all, it didn't change the total, the rock on the original part of the building or anything like that. So, I mean, I think it's important that it's in there um, and they took the, the tiles off of the museum. I mean, that's putting it back to original, so. Right. But, but I, and, there, and on, on those, going back to an original, I, I, my choice was to bring it to you guys. Because those tiles had been on there for so many years, I wanted to get additional, you know. Yeah, yeah I meant to say that the alteration, the addition, or the construction of the new commercial buildings doesn't no, the, much from the same the same information is going to be required. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, we're still going to need a drawing. We're still going to need, you know, materials. Okay, I see. So yeah, the same requirements. Right, and and it'll be the same. I, I think the same for construction and so placement size, kind, our specification of materials, a list, photographs, detailed drawings, scale, or architectural drawing. And actually, these items will really fall into any category where where they're going to fall into. If it's something that is a window replacement, it's not changing the opening size. Obviously, line drawings and architectural drawings aren't going to be needed. Um, but we are still going to need a specification of the materials list. We are still going to need um, you know, sufficient detail and photographs of you know, the materials that they're wanting to go in with, the materials that are there currently. So, I mean, a lot of these items that are on, that we're on this list that we're creating is, is going to be used in some aspect or another pretty much universally for yeah so if you're going to create a checklist a written mm -hmm. checklist how do you envision it kind of laying out um you're going to have the you know it, it it would just list them all out there and then just list you know of features that you need to submit across the top and then the list of items subject to, to approval down the first column and is check marks. Yeah, for or or you know, it could be. You may. Are you talking about for in-house or? Um, yeah. Well, I mean, it kind of helps me. I'm going to put together this checklist, mm -hmm. get a vision of what it's going to look like. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it would just be check marks and and boxes and yes, this is needed for this type of, of project. You know. Because I think what I'd like to suggest is that you put together a resolution for the board to adopt at the next meeting, so we have. A memorialization of sure, the, absolutely. The, the, uh -huh. the, the yeah. list. Would you just add on to another another sheet to the application? Yeah, and it can be, and that that additional sheet can just be, or even um, 
you know, slightly changing the, the certificate of appropriateness application, adding whatever is needed, and then that could just be part of that document. And it goes out with every request. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking, just add to the app. So what kind of oddball things do we get that we have to, I mean, that you can't use the same set of standards for it? But well, the one, one thing that I found in Martha's notes is that we don't, we haven't talked about is condition of present building materials. Yeah, that was. Um, but I mean, that would be, but I feel like that falls under like photographs and mm -hmm. details. Yeah. I mean, but you might want to list it because like, how do we know that the windows rotted out from whatever? Okay. I mean, that's always an excuse. Yeah, photograph of the <laughs> present <laughs> or windows condition. Or, or real difficult. I can't problem. fix them. It says. Yeah, yes, you can. we shouldn't. Yeah, no. yeah, we should. We shouldn't use replacement <laughs> windows of the type. They were on fire, and they could be fixed. And our guidelines tell us to not approve them. Our board says you got to approve them, or we're going to override you. The uh, <laughs> whatever. What was the name of that lady? What was her title? Was here when? from uh, on the on the Mary Sears. Yeah from the uh, Department of Natural Resources. Ship anyway, she, she, she made a statement about the problem we're having with window re requests. And she got, yeah. real an she got really animated in her mm -hmm. defense of wood she windows. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. it's, a, it's a real difficult problem. And uh, it just, if we sit here with a set of instructions that They're say lines. don't approve well, I, we sometimes and we know they were going to be overridden if we don't approve them. I, I and so what do we do? Do we start approving them or no, uh, you maintain and degrade the whole town? No, you still maintain your. I mean, I have the the, the position of this. I have here. What page is that on? Uh, chapter three, page sixty-four. Three sixty-four. Yeah, three sixty-four. It says it may be necessary in some cases, although wood was used historically, vinyl and metal is common on the market today and sometimes is suggested by replacement by suppliers. Mm -hmm. So it, the guidelines does not prohibit the use of vinyl windows. No, it doesn't prohibit them, but they are not in appearance, and that is one of our we aspects in terms and performance they're not up to a good window although there are good vinyl windows we cannot make this decision <coughs> for the homeowner we cannot decide what we like it has to be we have to consider what the homeowner wants then you look no, into i it. don't agree with that at all it's got to be what we are trying to maintain an appearance of the community okay. as a historic community. Appearance. In the appearance, yes. And, and some of these appear, you can't tell me, and from there, and this is just devil's advocate here, from some of these on the second floor, you can't tell whether it's wood or vinyl. The appearance, it looks it. So with the good ones, you're right. Yeah, good, right. good one. And, but and, we're and, not getting what the... Yeah, now that's, now the, that's the question, Frank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. the, is it a good one? Right. Question, right. They want the bargain basement fits all whatever, and we approve them. But right. you or we disapprove them, and you guys them. right. Well, you and I even had this discussion over a case that came up a while back. Yeah. And there are certain instances, okay, where a guy wants to put vinyl windows in, and it's deemed inappropriate because of the guidelines. Yet, what he has now is a wood window with an aluminum storm window over the top of it. That's, what That's recommended. But that doesn't look historic. They didn't have aluminum storm windows. Yeah, that's so my different. question with that. So here's my, that. here's my okay. thing. Let them put a vinyl window on a second floor and do away with the storm window from the street. That looks more historically correct oh, than an aluminum wrong. storm window. You think aluminum storm windows look better than that? Absolutely. I, really? I use them. No, I recommend no, no. them. I put in a few thousand. I thought we were about and appearances. Yeah, what happened to the appearance? And you take a thin thing that if it's a, a, well, my house is 12 over 12 windows. Okay. The upper frame, a 
covers 12 of them. The bottom covers 12 of them. The line, the one line on it goes right across over the wood. Yeah. The sides are less wide than the wood. You don't know there's a storm window in there. Well, those if you put in vinyl and you've got a shiny mess. That, those must be exceptional because the aluminum storm windows I see have a huge frame that protrude out and okay. covers the whole window. And I look at that and I go, you'd be better off just seeing a, a double hung which, vinyl which window. Which is why we're going to need specification right. materials. I'm sorry? You can get aluminum storm windows that are white. Our second floor ones that we purchased are white. You can't tell they're aluminum. I'm saying that's the exception. The case I was talking about had big thick so, aluminum yeah. things on it. I'm going, I'm sorry, a replacement window would look better than that. And if that it was, were a big, <laughs> you know, okay. But, We'll, we, we won't argue. We won't settle. We're not going to argue over it. I'm right. just saying there's another side to it, and that's, I believe, what that pertains to right there. There but are internal storm windows available. Yeah. There are. Mm -hmm. That fit really in the window. And the inside the window. Inside the window. Inside the window. It's, um, it keeps it from spreading one, moisture. One, one uh, manufacturer is Indo Windows. Um, I-N-D-O-W, I think is what it's called. And it's actually a... Um, a frame that is made and it has a a plexiglass basically on it. It's made just slightly larger than the the window frame and it has a gasket around the exterior, the outside perimeter of it, and it just flexes a little bit just to pop it in place. It pushes in mm -hmm. and it creates a sound barrier and it creates an internal mm -hmm. storm window. And you know, I mean that's an option as well. You can make them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can make them, I'm sure. No, on, on John Leak. my house quickly. Showed us how to make yeah. them. Really? The upper windows are 12 over 8, 6 or 8 over 12. So I have this. And yeah. if you put in a beautiful spaced window, and it looks terrible because it's, it's mm -hmm. visible. But if you don't have to, you just ask them of the individual size top and bottom and you yeah. put it in and you can't see it. That yeah, looks good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the appearance really looks good. So, um, so, two, got so far? two additional items that I've added other than um, than what we've already talked about is our three additional items. Well one was after photographs we talked about the condition of the current material um, and then I've added a site plan because yeah. that would be effective for outbuildings. for outbuildings. It would be effective for fences, for additions, New construction, and then um, and then Leanne just stated, if possible, if the um, applicant could request a sample of the material, the proposed material, with the you know, like if it's a window, or if it's a, or you know, a metal we, or siding, different people bring you know, mm -hmm. bring in a, a siding or sample or of, of what the um, what the material is. Even the vinyl window set. Yeah, windows. Windows and roofs are two of the worst features we have in terms of the preservation of the historic building. Right. The roofs, because if you put a good metal roof on, there's nothing better. But if you put the cheapest one you can find on, you're going to rot out to the top of your building. And that's the biggest controversy that I've seen where the Board of Aldermen have over read your decision is on metal roofs. It's never, I've been watching this now for three months. And I've seen you let them put vinyl, the guy they, down at the middle, you're letting him put vinyl windows in there. And the roof, you're letting him put all the siding and the, all the metal, and it's it's uniform, but the bigger conference, and it's what it's going to be, too, is because people are putting metal roofs on buildings, you know? So that's going to be your bigger stumbling block is, is roofs. It, it and the windows are two, yeah. two well, big things our, that are yeah, so hard to deal with so because, yeah, probably they not make, all metal roofs are equal. Well, yes. I agree. True. Right. Yeah. Not all metal is designed for a roof. Some of it's designed to be siding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. My house, the original roof, there's two roofs on my house. Well, the original I, is the metal shingles. Right. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. the Are they shingles. the embossed ones? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You can see them. Oh, they're from beautiful. The they're beautiful. Yeah. And that on the but then they put house. another right. roof over it. Well, so many of the roofs, the metal roofs, are, they're, are built for agricultural or right. industrial use. And the last go around we had on this uh, had the person bring in a roof that was recommended for residential use. 
Now, if that thing is recommended for residential use and passed all the tests that I had to make that recommendation, I yeah, can't argue with that. But that if it's a real cheap piece of barn roofing, you're yeah, running a good structure. Yeah, that's totally right. That's where our problems have come with the metal roof discussions. So it, it needs to be, that's where they'd be corrected if you bring the material in to look at it. Right. Right. That way you can make a good decision and know this is what you need and that's where if you bring, have them right. bring a piece of the roofing in and that, that'll clear things up. Because that's the stuff, roofs and windows, roofs and windows. Almost all contractors will provide you with samples. All right, the guy that stood at the, on the Gabori here, I was here the night, he brought samples into the, all the wood, the windows, and everything else. Mm -hmm. you know, it that good. makes life a lot simpler. Well, it makes it great. It was just the less confusion, makes everybody look good. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole, you know, they want everybody, they can, something to work with, that everybody here is happy with the appearance, so it's, we can restore and continue to, have our historic look and and to make the guy that's and the person that's paying for it happy with it too and have a good structure that it's not going to kill them to heat or because it's, it's expensive you know? or a leak in two years yeah a leak that's right and i agree with that roof that that's the key to it right there yeah. you know, so. okay well i mean i've got a i've got a good list here of the things that and if anything you know if anything else makes itself obvious in the preparation of this you know I can add those items as well and then the next meeting I'll bring it to you guys and you guys can vote on it and so what do we have right now right now we have architectural drawings or a detailed line drawing to scale specification on materials to be used a materials list and then um, there will also be a statement in there that the materials list as well that the drawings would be of a sufficient detail and clarity for the board to determine the conformance to the design guidelines. Um, photographs, uh, the condition of the current materials, a site plan, and a sample of the material to be used. Not all of those elements would apply to every certificate, every, so we'll no. just have to decide, we would have which, to decide one appropriate which one would be Right. And so I'll bring back a draft at the next meeting mm -hmm. for you guys to look at. Um, if everything looks, you know, the way that I drafted up, then you guys can vote on it right then and there and we can decide. Otherwise, we can make changes to it at that meeting. I'll make those changes and you can vote on that as well. And then I'll make those corrections and they'll go into effect immediately. So, sounds good. Martha, thank you for writing these up and helping clarify what I, have, I was trying to think. I have one other thing that I want to bring up. It's just an idea. I would like for us to have a mission statement. I think that's important for our aim. Uh, and I took, here again, from the guidelines, an idea. This can be repeat or whatever. But I think it's important for our image to tell the people. No, I do not. Here's one for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. What our mission is. So this is the mission of the Heritage Commission? Yes. But I, I wrote that out at first. I thought, no, that doesn't sound well, right. Well, sure does. The mission of the Heritage Commission. Everybody should have a mission statement. I think that's mm -hmm. sure. That's that's a good start. That's a good start. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the first part was the keeping our ambiance, and then the last part is to be able to work with the people. Right. And the people person. I. You work. With well, you got to watch people though. Take advantage. You can't. You cannot substitute them for anything. Why not? Hey, my job will be a lot easier without people. <laughs> well, I think it's a good idea. Does anyone have any? You're looking at it's got to be limited to the, I think, the historic districts. We, we can't just put it out as a city policy covering the subdivisions. Oh, yeah. It's got to be limited to your... I say you get them in them subdivisions. They need some work for it. So to uh, 
Our mission is to review proposals yeah, and improvements, <laughs> alterations, any new construction, and to assure that the story you will Are you my alderman? Yes. Mm. <laughs> well, he just talked about subdivision. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not here. Okay. It's just annoying. So what do you think? Do you like the idea of a mission statement? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think a phone call would do it. A phone call? Mm -hmm. To. Well, let's not do it on the end. Oh, <laughs> right. All right. Very good. Oh, you mean what? You and I? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we'll wait till they're. Yeah. Okay, so um, Leanne has one one uh, addition she'd like to make in this. In, and you guys, you know, take a look at this as well. And, and next month, you know, after you've looked at it, see if anybody has any additions or, or modifications or anything like that. I mean, you guys like it as it is, or do you want to make any whatever? Yeah, I think we should study it. I think you the know? idea is good. I'm not sure we don't have it somewhere in a big volume, but. Um, so, Leanne had, had just one addition possibly to put in here. Um, our mission is to review the proposals for improvements, alterations, and any new construction. And then she wanted to add within the historic district and to assure that the historic resources are preserved and that new construction is designed to be compatible with earlier buildings. We are to assist property owners when making decisions about repair, maintenance, rehab, and new construction. So it was just the addition of within the historic district. So everybody in well, okay. It isn't compatible with other buildings. It's compatible with the historic district. That's what we're missing in the town is a doggone fact that we're asking and getting federal money to make it a historic district, a national park, and you think in terms of individual buildings. What about the streets, the sidewalks, the lack of trees? We planted trees 30 years ago and it tore them down. Yeah, what the heck's going on, Martin? Randy, <laughs> what's the problem? I have, I have planted I know what trees you planted. Well, I, can't, I can't plant a 30-foot tree. <laughs> Why can't we? We can not see them them up. Yeah. Because there was some misinformation and we ended up with trees that buckled the sidewalks and caused That's other right. Trees. And anybody that I'm right here. puts trees <laughs> in a city knows that there is a maintenance requirement that goes along with them. And I don't know if for 30 years you replace those chair trees. If they're causing a problem. Oh, Randy. I love that. Didn't I know that? I wasn't even on the board. <laughs> that's, 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 that's not a good excuse. I know. Well, we got to straighten that out. I agree. <laughs> I was told. I was told. I believe that they were given misinformation when they were picked that they were supposed that's to. That's easy way. The roots were supposed to go. Uh, no. Oh, there you I go. Don't, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. I will agree that probably we <laughs> could have I don't know, this is the list I came up with. Okay. Or I'll yeah. combine that with one that I did with kind of put them right together now, with the yeah. ones that were similar. We put islands out in the street. Let's go with the same thing. Yep. Sounds good. Set down in the shade and not be burned out. I did. Now, we've got this stupid looking thing. Only the top page means anything. <laughs> and some people think that they're stupid looking from the word go. So and not everybody shares the same opinion. I can't believe that everybody doesn't agree with yeah. <laughs> But How in, terms, this in terms of the total tree canopy downtown, and right. notwithstanding the size right. of the replacement trees, uh, we, we will have, you know, say no, more, more trees. Well, then we, 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 we took down. They're just not the same way. Friday, you'll be wishing you had a tree if you're walking downtown. Yeah. It's only going to be 105 at Jerry Fett. <laughs> what about each exit? I will be inside. <laughs> Trees will be the least of my concerns. Yeah. Right, he's all of them. I don't know yeah. what to do with it. <laughs> Can I make a motion to adjourn? Well, we don't need to have it. It's over. Oh, yeah, it's over. All over. All in, all done. Turn off the microphone.